Hey, this is Todd with Jerry's Garage. Today we're going to talk about how not to kill your car. Uh, this car, for instance, was driving down the highway the other day and all of a sudden it just died and it hasn't restarted since. So today what we're going to talk about is this particular problem. If you look at this gauge here, this is a compression gauge. We're going to go ahead and uh, let's see if we can get a good picture of that. Um, that runs from zero all the way up to 300 PSI. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and try to start this car and we're going to see what happens to that compression gauge. Now if you notice it doesn't sound like a regular engine starting and that's because uh, we have about 10 PSI worth of pressure uh, when in reality we should have around 150. Now you ask yourself why does that engine sound so strange and we'll do that one more time just for the sound. Notice how that engine doesn't sound like it's catching, it just sounds like it's rotating. Well the reason why is because there's no compression. Now you wonder why is there no compression? Well that's because we suspect that the timing belt, this is a timing belt here, that broke because the maintenance wasn't done to it and if you look at this time belt you can see the cracks that go all the way around it well it cracked so much that it broke well what happens is on an engine that you know has a timing belt that timing belt is driven by the crankshaft and it goes around these uh, cam gears up here and those gears, you know, turn your cam shaft. And that cam shaft has lobes in it, and those lobes move the valves up and down. Well, what happens when a timing belt breaks is there's no coordinated movement, and especially on an interference engine, what happens is the piston will come up and collide with these valves. Now, we have some good show and tell items for you today. For instance, uh, I have my little display table here you can see some of these valves. Now they're supposed to be straight up and down, but you see how that's all curved? And even if you take it and you turn it, you can see how bent that is. Well, a lot of times you will bend a valve when your timing belt goes because that belt is more or less a belt of choreography. It's choreographing the movements of the pistons which are attached to rods which go to the crankshaft and then the valves are controlled by the camshaft so they move up and down. Well what happens when that gets out of whack, the timing's gone, the choreography's gone and you have pistons that meet valves and sometimes in extreme cases it will actually break a piston. Notice that's just piece of a piston. This is piece of a rod. Here is a real bent rod that should be nice and straight and actually would go like that and then the piston would come up here to the top and sit on that. So you can see extreme damage can occur when your timing belt's not done. Uh, a lot of times, you know, customers are like, well, why don't we wait until it goes bad? And we're like, well, if you wait until it goes bad, I mean, you're gonna be in a pretty serious situation. So on this car, we may end up pulling ahead, like this is a head that we've pulled off of a Jeep. Uh, this is an old one because it's no good because it's uh, actually damaged beyond repair. But those valves, they move up and down like that. And, you know, if it gets out of time, all of a sudden, you know, that piston comes up and it'll hit that valve. And that's how you end up with bent valves. So our recommendation is if you have a timing belt engine, please get that timing belt done while you're still in your maintenance period. So give us a call at the shop if you have any questions or need some maintenance.